it's Madison, and I'm a content developer here at Gold Biotechnology. Today we're going to be going over how to use our bacterial cell lysis buffer and our protease inhibitors so you can see how they're useful in your protein extraction. If you guys want to check it out, then let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting out with two bacterial cultures that I grew overnight. I will also be using our bacterial cell lysis buffer. There are two types of protease inhibitors that I will mention today. One is a bacterial protease inhibitor. The other is an extra strength pro block protease inhibitor that can be used as well. First, I'll be preparing the bacterial cell lysis buffer by adding the protease inhibitor. In this case, I will be using our bacterial protease inhibitor. Protease inhibitors are important in protein extractions because they inhibit the destruction of proteins of interest. Many of our inhibitors contain inhibitors to serine and cysteine, among others. You could also use our extra strength protease inhibitor for the most demanding protein purification applications. Now I'll be demonstrating how easy it is to use our ProBlock protease inhibitors. First, I allowed the vial to warm to room temperature. This particular protease inhibitor comes in a 100x solution. For a 1x final concentration, I added 10 microliters per milliliter of the sample. Specifically in this situation, I added 10 microliters of bacterial protease inhibitor to 1 milliliter of bacterial cell lysis buffer. For more potent protease inhibition, you can add 20 to 30 microliters per mil of sample for a 2 to 3x final concentration. Our protease inhibitors are super easy to use because they come in solution already and they also come with optional EDTA. Use caution when deciding whether or not to use EDTA since it inhibits some of the chromatography that might be utilized downstream. After both components are added, I lightly vortex to mix the two components together. Now I'm removing the bacterial cell lysis buffer that contains the ProBlock inhibitor out of the tube and putting it into another tube that contains the bacterial cells that had been spun down to the bottom of the tube. Next, I gently pipetted up and down until the pellet was homogenous with the lysis buffer. The resulting homogenate was then placed on ice for five minutes. After remaining on ice for five minutes, I gently vortex the solution and put it in the incubator at 37 degrees for 60 minutes. After the 60 minute incubation period, I lightly vortex the solution one more time and transferred the solution to Eppendorf tubes. I then centrifuge the lysate at 20,000 Xg at 4 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes and collect the clear lysate. I do this by removing the supernatant and transferring that to a clean Eppendorf tube. The lysate is now ready for any application, including biological activity assays, electrophoresis, protein purification, or further analysis of the protein. See the protocol below for how to remove nucleic acids and when lysozyme contamination is not acceptable for your analysis. Visit goldbio.com for all your protein extraction reagents. Thanks for watching!